add this insult to injury for OU fans. Arkansas and Tulsa both have wins against ranked opponents before Oklahoma does. I did not expect to say that sentence in October of this year. I did not expect that, mm-hmm. right? That said, how do you see this one playing out? Because I really enjoy the uh, the idea of Kendall Browse's offense going up against Kevin Steele's defense. And I really, really love the idea of Barry Odom's defense going against Chad Morris's offense with everything that Chad Morris thinks he knows about guys that have already got to 50% of his win total last year. <laughs> Dude, you, you highlighted the one that I really wanted to see. Barry Odom coming in for Arkansas was a big deal for me. I thought he's a pretty darn good coach. He helped Missouri at times stay relevant in the SEC. It's just it's hard just to coach there, right? It's a tough job to have. And when he was brought in by, by Sam Pittman, I was sitting there thinking, that's a nice move by the new head coach. Yeah. Bringing in a guy with coaching experience and defense success. I mean, people forget that Odom had a very good coaching career before being named the head coach. They were bowl eligible. They fired him after being bowl eligible. They just had the bowl ban. Like, what the hell did you want in Missouri? I'm sorry. I just, I still get pissed about that. I I do. It's crazy. It's crazy. You have every right to be upset because I don't know what Missouri was expecting. But for Odom to now be at Arkansas, I mean, he's going to take a defense that outside of your guy, Bumper Fool, has, has not necessarily recruited a ton of talent. And they're looking pretty darn good. Now, Here's the thing. I'm also fascinated by this quarterback matchup, right? I mean, Bo Nix, right. Felipe Frank. Who is going to show up? I have no idea. Here's the big thing, too. Felipe Frank, if he's able to hold on to the football and not turn the ball over, Arkansas may have the advantage because, obviously, he did not turn the ball over against Mississippi State. They won the game. He turned the ball over twice against Georgia. That thing completely fell off the wheels. I think... If Felipe is just able to maintain possession of the football, Arkansas has got some things figured out offensively. And obviously Auburn is going through a little bit of transition defensively. They're young on the defensive line. I just think whichever quarterback is able to make sure they at least just keep their team on the field from an offensive perspective could have the advantage. I really don't know which quarterback is going to show up. I think Bo Nix has kind of been, again, very inconsistent, and Auburn has struggled to run the football this year, which doesn't help him at all. So I'm telling you, man, I mean, Arkansas can make this thing really interesting, and I'm fully expecting them to because of the amount of talent in that coaching staff and honestly how they're able to put the puzzle pieces together right now on both offense and defense. I'd add here, Bo Nix is not only Auburn's leading passer, he's their second leading rusher. That can't be against Arkansas. You're going to have to get Bigsby going in a really good way. And as for Felipe Franks, you still got Traylon Smith and Raheem Boyd, or uh, Raheem Boyd, excuse me, to hand the ball off to. But I thought that the emergence of one Devion Warren has kind of been undersold. And I really do like, like, I like, I like being right as much as anybody else, but Bumper Pool was doing this last year right now you give him a defensive coordinator who knows what he is doing and it all of a sudden starts to come together along with guys like Xavier Kelly and and on it goes um how do you see this one ending up I I'm gonna give Auburn the narrow victory here just because I still think Arkansas is gonna try and figure things out on both sides of the ball again I'm expecting a close game Auburn is at home if I remember correctly so I'll give the Tigers a slight advantage there yeah there won't be a ton of fans in the stands but there's something to be said for being in your own locker room in the SEC so I, I've got Auburn winning but I'm expecting this one to be a little bit of a battle because again like those coaches on Arkansas staff know what to do and they've shown it to this point with some interesting pieces on the roster so I'm definitely going to try and see this game in action. I think the Razorbacks could make this thing really interesting. Yeah, man. Uh, they're 13 and a half dogs at Jordan Hare. That's too many points. Like, I don't see 14 points here. I don't see anybody being able to score that many points here, for starters. Because I just don't trust <laughs> Bo Nix with the football. And Felipe Franks has been anything but consistent. As a matter of fact, he's probably the most inconsistent quarterback that I've ever seen start this many games. Because... In some games, he looks like Superman. In other games, it's like, yo, man, who are you actually throwing that to? I would really like to know. And if you put him out there on the perimeter and let him run, 
he's a galloping gazelle. Like, he's a lot of fun to watch. And I kind of look at Kendall Bras going, can you get this guy to just be consistent with his choices? Can you do that? And it, probably not this year. But going into next year, when they get Texas in Fayetteville, that's going to be fun. And I think Malik Hornsby is going to challenge K.J. Jefferson for that spot because I think Malik, I think the world of Malik Hornsby. And I like knowing that he could be in this veer and shoot where he can be as just as big a threat to run the ball as any tailback. Um, all right, let's get to the game that you and I are going to play, pay the most attention to. And that is going to be Oklahoma versus number 22, Texas. I need to add here, this first time that Texas has been ranked and Oklahoma hasn't in this matchup since 2005. I also need to add that no team has lost more games as a ranked team versus unranked team since 2017 than Tom Herman and the Texas Longhorns. Neither team can afford to lose this football game. It, it cannot happen. And yet, somebody's got to catch an L. And in one way, this was not the kind of collapse that I expected for Oklahoma if they did lose to going into this 2020 season with three straight in conference, but basically 20 years of sustained success, right? And I thought at one point, something's got to give, something's got to go. Either you're going to get to the mountaintop or you're going to start to erode before you do. On the other hand, it's a prove-it year for Tom Herman in Texas because many folks expected them to win the Big 12 championship. I know nobody actually wanted to make that vote, but if you were going to bet on a Texas team, this is the one to bet on because it's the most talented one that I've seen since 2009. You got Sam Ellinger going into what we thought was going to be his best year. You have a five-star tailback as the third guy on the depth chart, and you revamped the defense into one in which Joseph Asai can absolutely eat, and that left tackle is just going to be a problem all year. It's, it just is. Even that said, Oklahoma goes in as a two-and-a-half-point favorite to open the week. How do you see this one going? Uh, man, I I am still stunned that Texas isn't the favorite in Vegas, but at the same time, I'm not because I, I have Oklahoma winning. We have a ton of various podcasts that people can listen to on the, on the thread, so be sure to check that out. I've got Oklahoma winning 42-38. Just because I need to see it to believe it, right? I just need to see this Texas team put it together and beat Oklahoma in the situation. Something they haven't necessarily been able to do all that much outside of that win for Sam Ellinger, avoiding that late comeback from Kyler Murray. I just think, okay, we, we've talked about the game a ton, but this is for me what I really want to expand. And you mentioned it. Like, this is, this is kind of a do or die situation for both of these squads. It's a must win for a number of different reasons. And, like, I see this as a game where there's way more to lose for both teams than to actually gain. Because at this point, I just don't see either of these teams reaching the college football playoff. This obviously isn't a resume-boosting win at this point for either team. So, like, what do you actually get out of the win here? You get to keep your head above water. But at the same time, if you lose, you're Oklahoma. You're staring 0-3 down the barrel. And with no end in sight, I mean, you got a bye week then TCU, then Texas Tech, and you're going to see basically Oklahoma State absolutely take the ring in the conference. And various changes will have to happen, and I don't know what that looks like, but there's going to be hellfire and brimstone to pay from the fan base. On the other side of things, if, if Tom Herman can't get the job done against a down Oklahoma football team with a senior quarterback and outstanding talent defensively, I just I think this is the nail in the coffin. I just don't see how he can survive it, even with landing a guy like Quinn Ewers in 2022. Like, how do you justify that loss? I really don't know how you can, especially because, I mean, you mentioned it. Osai has been playing really well. Keandre Coburn had 11 tackles last week, a defensive tackle. That's not production that you see from most defensive tackles across the country. So some of his pieces are working. It's just he can't put all of them together. And if Herman can't get the job done this weekend against Oklahoma, an Oklahoma football team that just has simply no identity right now on either side of the football, I, what do you do? Like, how do you, how do you look at yourself in the mirror and justify that loss for Tom Herman? So there is so much at stake in the negative for both squads, RJ. I, I don't see much of a positive from winning, but you sure as hell don't want to lose if you're either team. But like you said, someone's got to catch the L. And in the aftermath, 
there's going to be a lot to pay for both head coaches and all those players and coaches and staff, whichever one takes the L. I, I, I'm fascinated to see how it plays out. But, again, I've got Oklahoma winning, and I'm expecting a ton of points to be scored at some point. Well, that is about 40 minutes of content that we did not know we would get to. Uh, <laughs> it's been a wild week. Uh, follow Colin Kennedy on Twitter at ckennedy247. That is C Kennedy 247 Follow him for updates on all the recruits and goings on as he's going to try to hit four high school football games in two days. We'll have all of your OU Texas coverage at OUinsider.com. Myself, Colin, Joey Helmer, Brandon Drum, going to keep it on and popping. Going to try to keep my straight up streak alive as I am leading the picks pool in that way. And then I am dead last against the spread. So I'm good at picking winners. Not good at picking the spread. Maybe follow Colin when we're talking about picking the spread. Uh, Colin, man, thanks as always, dude. Always fun, man. Let's do it again soon.